the Russian wingship that never flew. And the Caspian Sea Monster. In May 1922, popular mechanics reported on the bright future of wing and ground craft, known in Russian Akrano plane. That future never came. In the May 1992 issue, popular mechanics reported on the bright future of wing and ground effect, WIG, craft, known in Russian as Akrano plane. Emerged from a secretive Soviet Union project, the Orlyanok represented what this future could be. In this ambitious vision of travel, fleets of hovering ships would traipse across oceans delivering passengers and cargo. It's a future that never arrived, and today Akrano planes are mostly found in museums. Amid the ruins of an empire worn down by the long smoldering standoff of the Cold War are scattered jewels of technology. Born out of decades of secretive toil by the best minds this vast nation could muster, many are unlike anything the free world has ever seen. One of these jewels is called Orlyanok, or Little Eagle. Half airplane, half watercraft, its prototype emerged quietly from a shipyard along the, the banks of Russia's Volga River more than a decade ago. It is the realization of a concept that Western engineers have only toyed with. Able to skim a few feet over the wave tops at 250 miles per hour and land 30 tons of troops, missiles and supplies on an embattled beachhead, Orlyanok was designed to fight a war that never came. Now, desperate to make their vast investment pay off, the builders of Orlyanok are hunting for new markets and beginning to share their secrets. The lines of communication between East and West are still shaky. But interviews with Russian sources and Western aerodynamicists are beginning to yield a detailed view of a technology that could, if properly nurtured, deliver the first major advance in high-speed transport since Boeing brought jet flight to the masses. Orlyanok is a massive and complex machine. With a length of 190 feet and a maximum takeoff weight of 275,000 pounds, it is on the scale of a medium-sized wide-body airliner like the Boeing 767. What sets Orlyanok apart, however, is that, along with a handful of similar Russian craft, it is the first practical large-scale flying machine built to harness a powerful aerodynamic phenomenon known as the ground effect. Familiar since the dawn of aviation, the ground effect is what accounts for the simple fact that winged craft fly more efficiently when they're close to the ground. It works by altering airflow patterns to increase lift and reduce drag. In normal flight, High-pressure air spilling up from beneath each wingtip stirs up tornado-like currents called wingtip vortices. These trail back from the wing and deflect the passing airstream downward. This gives the airstream's overall direction a slight downward slant. And since lift runs perpendicular to airstream, the wing tends to pull the plane backward slightly as well as upward. Aerodynamicists have developed a number of ways to address this, including the winglets now commonplace on the tips of jetliner wings. But none of these match the effectiveness of flying so low that the ground blocks the swirling vortices. While any airplane can benefit from the ground effect simply by staying within about half a wingspan of the surface, it takes a different breed of air vehicle to take full advantage of it. The reward is substantial, however. A purpose-built ground effect vehicle known as a wing and ground effect craft, WIG, or a chronoplane in Russian can fly on about one-fifth the power of a similar size airplane flying out of ground effect. That means five times the fuel efficiency. Over the years, numerous small prototypes have been built that test all kinds of WIG configurations. One of the most advanced is the two-seat flare craft, which appeared on our July 1989 cover, above, and recently entered production. But all of these are aerodynamic playthings compared to what the Russians have built. They are hands down, 30 years deeply in advance of the West, says Stefan Hooker, a top U.S. ground effect expert who has visited several of the Russian design bureaus. This sophistication is based not only on strong theoretical analysis and thorough testing, but on decades of practical experience. Where others have sketched, the Russians have built. A sampler of the resulting know-how can be found in Orlyanok. Although the Russians are quick to point out that it is not their most advanced design, it is far and away the most advanced wig that Westerners have been allowed access to. A key feature originated by the Russians and built into all of their large wigs is the ability to use something called the power augmented ram, par, effect. In the case of Orlyanok, this is created by a pair of Kuznetsov NK-8 turbofans mounted inside the nose. Swiveling nozzles direct exhaust back beneath the wings, where it is trapped by trailing edge flaps and wingtip endplates. The result is a cushion of air that lifts the craft off the surface and enables it to move easily at low speeds, much like a hovercraft. 
Parse solves a problem that has always dogged seaplane designers. Namely, that water is about 800 times denser than air. That means it takes a tremendous amount of energy to get a plane moving through the water fast enough to take off. Historically, the solution has been to sacrifice flying performance by overpowering the craft and by giving it a lot of wing area so it can get airborne at low speed. PAR reduces the need for such compromises. Orlyanox design was developed by the late Rostislav Evgenievich Oleksiev, a revered figure in Soviet aerodynamics. An earlier effort of his, known in the West as the Caspian Sea Monster is the source of Orlyanox's basic shape. Built in the early 1960s, that one-of-a-kind vessel was powered by 10 turbine engines and was about 300 feet long, making it one of the largest aircraft ever built. In Alexiev's designs, lift comes from a stubby, low-aspect ratio wing mounted amidships and a large horizontal tail surface mounted high atop the vertical fin. This twin-wing configuration overcomes longitudinal instability that has plagued other ground-effect vehicles. The problem arises from a tendency for the center of pressure supporting the craft to move fore and aft with changes in altitude. Alexiev locates the tail surfaces high enough out of ground effect and shapes them so that these complex dynamics aren't a problem. In the case of Orlyanok, the high vertical tail also provides the perch for a Kuznetsov NK-12 turboprop engine, well known to NATO for its use on the Bear strategic bomber. Fitted with twin counter-rotating propellers, it puts out 15,000 horsepower to drive Orlyanok in cruising flight, during which the forward PAR engines are usually shut down. Not only is the turboprop more efficient than a jet, but its variable pitch provides remarkable low-speed maneuverability in PAR mode. What is it like to fly such an unorthodox craft? Valentin Vasilyevich Nazarov, chief designer with the Eklund Design Bureau and one of Orlyanok's test pilots, spoke to us about it by phone from St. Petersburg, Russia. The procedure is similar to the one of any flying device, he says. You have to start the engines, place all the crew in their places, run a check on all the equipment, warm the takeoff engines and the main engine. Then the takeoff engines start pumping the air under the wing, and the horizontal movement starts. The craft starts to lift itself from the water. It gains speed up to 150 kmph, 93 miles per hour. Thereafter, the pilot can use all aerodynamic surfaces to fly the craft. Normal cruising altitude is between 25 and 40 feet, depending on wave height. Some of the strain of maintaining altitude so precisely is relieved by a computerized flight control system, which uses inputs from surface scanning Doppler and conventional 